Amen. Let, let's get our Bibles and go to the book of St. Luke. Now, something I want you to notice. Last week, we were studying about the unjust servant. And I want you to see something here in the scripture, how, how, how the Spirit of God talks to us in scripture. Amen? Now, if you look at St. Luke chapter 16, Our parable last week went from the first verse to the 13th verse. That's where we start. Uh, 14, if you look at verse 14, it picks it up. It talks about the Pharisees who were covetous. as they heard these things and they derided him. In other words, they didn't like what Jesus was saying. Uh, and... Uh, he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. I, I, I want you to hear how he's talking. So, so he's letting them know particularly that I gave you this particular parable to help you straighten up a little bit. Amen. And, and, and as, he, as he did so, he talked about uh, 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 what they should do because they were talking against him. Verse 14, the words, he derided him. They were getting on him for, for bringing up these subjects because these subjects made them guilty because they were. And I want you, I want you to kind of look at how God just turns things around. And... and, and uh, Verse 16 says, the law and the prophets were unto John since that time the kingdom of God is preached. Every man presses in, into it. In other words, he's saying things have changed. There's been a shift. The law and the prophets were, were, were taught up to John the Baptist. He said when John the Baptist came along, there was a shift. It wasn't the law and the prophets. Now, and still is, it's the kingdom of God. So we preach kingdom stuff. Kingdom stuff. It's about the kingdom. Let's, let's look at it. And he goes into, he's always throwing little things out to make you think. He says, it's easier uh, for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. He said, the law won't fail, but there's been a shift. Now it's the kingdom. Uh, you following me? Now watch what he does in the next verse. It doesn't apply to nothing that we've just studied. Watch what he does. Out the blue. Somebody say, out the blue. He says, whosoever put away his wife. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. He wasn't talking about marriage. But you, you see how, because he's talking to a bunch of Pharisees. I want, you, I want you to get the picture. So he gives this parable about somebody who's stealing money in front of them. Because somebody was stealing money. That's what he talked about. And then he went on and he talked about it. They, they got bothered by him saying so. And then he corrected that. And he said, well, you know, uh, th there won't be one law, one tittle of the law that will fail. He said, well, we're talking kingdom now. Things have changed. There's been a shift. While they were deriding him and thinking different things about him, all of a sudden, knowing what they were thinking, he deals with this issue right here. Just for one verse to let them know that he knows them. Whosoever puts away his wife and marries another committed adultery. And whosoever marries her that is put away from her husband committed adultery. Wait, wait a minute. He, he just went in a completely different vein. He, he, says, he says, now, uh, if you put away your wife, God bless you, Bishop. If you put away your wife and you marry somebody else, he said, you commit adultery. And anybody who marries her, who you put away, commits adultery. That means that he don't recognize the divorce. I thought I'd throw that in there. I thought I'd throw that in there. 
it's important that you that you that when you read the Bible, remember when he's giving these parables, he's talking to folks. And probably the one that was leading, you, you know, the opposition against him that fit this particular situation. He's letting him know, I know you put away your wife and you married somebody else. He said, and then, then he said, and when you did that, you commit an adultery because I didn't recognize your divorce. And your wife, he says, if she married somebody else, she commit an adultery too. Whew. I'm going to go ahead and try to teach through some of this. If y'all all right? I don't want y'all mad at me or nothing because I'm reading. I'm just reading what's here. Now we get ready to get into another parable. Amen. I want to kind of study some of these parables. And the reason I'm doing so, I want you to know how, I want you to get to the place where you can kind of understand somewhat how Jesus operated and how he thought. Okay. Next scripture talks about, uh, he said there was a, verse 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, fared sumptuously every day. You may be seated. Fared sumptuously. Now we're going to walk through this. Uh, there is uh, no sin in being rich, but there's a sin in being rich. You can be wealthy, <clears throat> understanding where you got your wealth from. It's like when you got money and uh, you know what to do with it. But some people, it's, in, it's the reverse. The money got them. When, when, when money has a person, it ain't got to be a lot. It could be your income tax for the weekend. You'll change up. You'll change up. As soon as you get that check Friday, you'll, you'll get brand new on folks. Especially if it's a pretty sizable check. You get brand new on people. Amen. Amen. Get brand new on folks. Amen. Ain't paid your tithe and I don't know how long. And to come down here with three hundred dollars and you know you get a nine thousand dollar check and come and wait right here for, for me to come get it. <laughs> get brand new in the church, brand new at the mall. Your mama ain't got nothing to eat, you don't give her nothing, you don't go by and see her, you just get brand new. That, that's what happens when money have you. And money got you, you will be obedient to that feeling regarding money. So here, so here again, he talked about the unjust servant who was stealing from a man who was wealthy. Now he goes and talks about the rich man. So, 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 so uh, the 16th chapter of, uh, of St. Luke, he deals with money in a sense. Now here he tells us how to handle it or how things are going to be if you don't handle it the right way. Let's go to verse 22, or 20, rather, verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Now, this is not the same Lazarus of Bethany who was raised from the dead. This, this is a different Lazarus. It's not the same one. Now, now, scholars refer to the rich man, and some of you may have heard this if you've been in church for a little while. The rich man's name is Dives. Now, Dives is, 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 a, is a Greek word that means rich. And they call him Dives. Some, some uh, commentaries that you may read about this particular portion of Scripture will bring out the name Davies. Davies is the rich man. The Bible doesn't call him Davies, but some scholars refer to him as Davies. Uh, Lazarus was not the Lazarus 
that uh, was raised from the dead. This is a different Lazarus. Amen. Tell, tell your neighbor, say, this is a different Lazarus. If I can get you to repeat it, you can remember it. Amen. This is a different Lazarus. Now, 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 now this is what we're going to do with this. I want to go back and I want to show you something in verse 19. Verse 19, it says, <clears throat> um, certain rich man clothed in purple. Purple is a royal uh, 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 color. <clears throat> it's royal. It, it doesn't particularly deal with the aspect of you being rich. It means royal. So he, he wore purple and fine linen. Uh, and, and, the, and the scripture fared sumptuously every day. In other words, he got clean every day. Wasn't going nowhere. He just clean. He just walked around sharp in his richness. He was just sharp every day. But there was a man that was poor named Lazarus. No, 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 let's look at verse 20. Let, let, let's kind of dissect the scripture and look at it for just a minute. He says, uh, a certain beggar, he was a beggar. His name was Lazarus. He was a beggar, and watch this, uh, and, uh, which was laid at the gate of the rich man. The rich man's place was gated. He couldn't get into his place. It was gated. And, and somebody would pick up Lazarus, take him, lay him at the gate of the rich man. When they laid him at the gate of the rich man, it was mentioned here in the scriptures that Lazarus had sores all over his body. Nine times out of ten, he wasn't pleasant smelling. He probably could smell Lazarus if he got close to him because somebody laid him there every day. Now, now it didn't say who laid him there. It didn't say that somebody laid him there because Lazarus requested it. It didn't say that. Now, watch this. Be careful, preachers. When you begin to talk about stuff in Scripture that's not in Scripture, the Bible says in the book of Revelations, don't add nothing. And don't take nothing away. You, you, you can give a person your opinion or, as many of us preachers say, use our sanctified imagination, but that's all it is. You can't make no decisions on my sanctified imagination. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't interpret this scripture on my sanctified imagination. It don't say nothing about why he was laid, whether he wanted to. I could, I could suggest that. Or whether somebody else wanted to put him there uh, uh, to, to try to bring disgust to the rich man. It don't say. It don't mention it at all. Now watch this. Let's go further. Verse 21 says, And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. Now here he is. All he wanted from the rich man was some crumbs. You would think somebody being rich would, would just, you know, say, well, just take this out there to Lazarus. He's out there. Somebody laid him out there again today. And then, then you can go further and say, well, you know, just, just take him out there and somebody go clean him up and put some oil or something on the sores or something or whatever. Just try to help him out a little bit. Uh, uh, but that was never happening. The rich man never responded to Lazarus' needs. You have to be careful while you're walking around downtown with your little money in your pocket and you see somebody sitting down and you walk past them like they ain't nobody. You don't know who you're walking past. The Bible says we entertain angels. Other words, you, you don't know if that's a test for you or not. You, you, don't, you, you, you got it. You can give him a quarter or 50 cents or something. You, you, don't, you don't know. You don't know. That's a, there was a gentleman. He sit down in front of the church uh, uh, when we was at the old church all the time begging, a couple of them begging. 
one named Clinton, one named Daniel. He was always begging, always begging, always wanting something. And folks would come in here and come, come to me and say, Dad, I said, I said, well, give him something then. Don't come in here to me. I'm preparing to preach, and you don't want to give somebody 50 cents with your unsaved self. If you're getting on your nerves, maybe that's the reason God let him come back here. Because sometimes many of us always got enough to give somebody else something. We got enough to help somebody else. A lot of us walk around, all we, all we want is more money, more money, more money. You can help somebody with their Christmas, help somebody with their Thanksgiving. Feed the homeless, clothe the naked. Let's go a little bit further. So here, here he is. <clears throat> he says, he, he says, uh, uh, 22 says, and it came to pass that the beggar died. Okay, now Lazarus dies. He looks out one morning, and Lazarus is gone. Uh, and the, the Bible particularly uh, doesn't say what he said about it, so I won't add nothing to it. It said, he, it said it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried, watch this, was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and was buried. Sometimes, sometimes, when I first, when I first years ago read this, this always provoked me to make sure I give somebody something, because because if you're not careful, it, it looked like him not giving the beggar something was the reason he he, he was buried and went to hell. Let, let, let's see what it says. I, I don't want to jump the gun. Let's see what it says. He said, and, and in hell, he lift up his eyes. Wouldn't that be something? You die, and you, you, and you think you're a good member in the church, but you treat people wrong. That, that's, you ain't got to worry about how folk treat you. T turn to somebody and say, don't worry about how folk treat you. God got them. Whatever they do to you, whatever they say about you, don't, don't even try to respond to any of that. God got them. God will fix it. He will work it out. Yes, he will. You ain't got to do nothing. You ain't got to do nothing. You ain't got, you ain't got to have no confrontation. You, you ain't got to talk to them. You ain't got to come in and talk to you what you're trying to do. You ain't got to do none of that. Let the Lord deal with them. Lazarus, the beggar, didn't say nothing to the rich man. He died. When he died, angels came and got him. Put him in Abraham's bosom. Bless his holy name. Now, now, now see, this, now, theologically, when you look at the scriptures, you, 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 you read on and talk about there was a guff fixed. And we'll get into that in just a minute. Because, because what Abraham was, wasn't heaven. But it wasn't hell. Because folk didn't go to heaven until Jesus died. And Jesus went to hell and got folks that was in this place. And said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Let the king of glory come in. So he came down and he got everybody that, 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 that was righteous and took them to glory. Now watch this. Let's go a little bit further. Watch this. And he cried and said, uh, Father Abraham, this is the rich man. He's he praying now. 
He praying now. He didn't pray while he was alive. Let's, let's listen to his prayer. He said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in some water and put it on my tongue. Cool my tongue, for I am tormented in the flame. Now he need Lazarus. You know what goes around. So he's, he's being tormented while, while, while Lazarus is with Abraham. Now let's, let, let's look at it and see what happens. So watch this. this. This is key. It's important. But Abraham said, son, well, I feel this tonight. Remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. My, 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 my. And besides all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fix. In other words, I'm in a place I couldn't get to you if I wanted to. There's a guff fixed. You over there burning up, and we over here chilling out. What you do in this lifetime will determine where you go after you die. You can be in church. You can be a preacher in the pulpit with whatever title they want to give you. But if you don't treat folks right... You can say you got the Holy Ghost. You can speak in tongues and your mouth get dry. But if you don't treat people right, you ain't got to say nothing to me tonight. You got to get to the place where you don't let folks bother you. Get to that place. But when they say something crazy, you just keep walking. Because you ain't got to do it. Don't lower yourself to deal with certain situations. Tell your neighbor, say, stay up. Don't lower yourself. After God has elevated you, what you going to come down for and put your finger in somebody's face that don't deserve you even talking to them? Don't, don't bring yourself down. A whole, whole lot of folks, they, they bring themselves down. And the devil play them games. Yeah, somebody say something about you, or somebody do something to you, and, and, and you you want to just let me. I'm you know I'm gonna let them know who I am. I'm gonna let them. But, but in order to let them know who you are, you got to come down from where you are. Tell you this, stay where God puts you. Don't be trying to come down and deal with somebody that's not worth your divine time. Folk would talk about me with Bishop. Why you know? I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time to be bothered with that foolishness. God will handle that mess. I'm tell, tell you this: God will handle it. See, He got your back. Vengeance belongs to Him. He will repay. All you gotta do is just serve Him. And when you get real frustrated, just bust loose with a stupid shout. But there ain't no music playing, there ain't no organ playing, they ain't, they're giving out the announcements, but if something irritates you, just start shouting. Shout off. Just, just don't, don't wait on nobody else to shout with you. Just, just get up and give God a praise right there where you are in the midst of the announcements. Holler loud enough where they can't even hear the announcements. And just praise them like you've lost your mind. But don't give nobody trying to irritate you the time of day. It ain't necessary. After God has, has made you who he's made you, you're going you to fall prey to what somebody is doing. A roll in their eyes. Let them roll their eyes. Let them look at you crazy. 
It's all right. Let them look at you. Let them roll their eyes. Let them talk about you like a dog. But you just come in here and give God a ridiculous praise because everything is already all right. Let me get back to the scripture. I feel something in here. Somebody just give the Lord a praise right there with y'all. And, and by, 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 by the way, by the way, by the way, let, let, me, let me share this. Can I share this with you? That kind of stuff, rolling eyes, talking about you, that's kid stuff. That's kid stuff. That's, that's, that's weak game. They're doing that because they want to be you. You didn't hear what I said. They want to be you. That's the only reason they're messing with you, because they want to be you. And the only way they can be you is take you out of character. Some folk never get past the place of playing games. You play them in the church. Play, I mean, play them in, you, 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 you could be, you could be uh, 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 the, the head man in, 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 the, in the front parking lot. And somebody doesn't come along and, 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 and take, take, take your place, or you think somebody's going to take your place, and you just go off. What you doing out here? I'm parking these cars. It become a big deal now. When you didn't care about the cars before, you didn't want to do it right. But let me tell you something. When you start working in the church, all of a sudden you find yourself, if you don't do it right, God will put somebody else there. If I get to the place where I can't do this right, somebody will be placed in my place. And doing, doing, watch this, watch this. Let me share this with you before I go to the next scripture. Doing, doing something right means correcting yourself. You cannot do this kind of work without getting on you. Reevaluating. Did, did I do that right? Did I handle that right? I wonder what they thought about me when I, when I told them, how, you know, the usher, did, did I sit them down right? Did I do it right? And you have to, in church, you have to be courteous and polite. And when we have complications and stuff, and sometimes I hear weird little, little, little nuances of folks doing stuff. You know, the elder gentleman will come up and doing the convocation. He might sit right there. He don't know no better. He might sit right there. But then maybe somebody come along. You got to get up. You got to go cause bitches. So leave the man where he is. Watch it. That's a mistake you made. You got to live with that one. If you were supposed to make sure certain folks sit here and somebody got past you, let them sit right there. That's, that's your bad. You don't come in here and, and, and have somebody to get up embarrassing them. They're 85 years old. You got to go back here and sit down because Bishop Sons or his wife come. Let them sit with their sweat and city and find somewhere else. Because this is about being courteous and polite. When, when I come to church, I have to have a good experience. Even if that was the case, you would have to do that. You would have to do it with all kind of, of politeness. And if, and, and if they didn't want to move, let them sit down. It ain't for you. To be standing up right here while I'm talking. You got to move, sir. You got to move. You got to move. You're right, right there in front of everybody. Now, now you created a scene. <laughs> to me, it's common sense. But oftentimes, you got to teach some folk that. Because some folk oftentimes, they yearn for attention, even if it's the wrong kind of attention. You, 
got you got to be polite and kind. You you have to be you have to be nice. There's a courtesy in church that you've got to display. You you can't be using your your fake street creds. Trying to tell an 85-year-old woman to move. In church. That, 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 that's when we know that's when we know you ain't got no, no street creds nowhere. Because you messing with an 85-year-old woman. With your bad self. You just you just you're a tough man. I, I remember. I, I, I've seen it often. I remember praying for people when we, all the time be a big when, I, when the spirit of love moved me. There's a whole lot of folk, and I started just praying for folk. I've seen people push folk almost down. What's that about? Let me ease on back over here. He says. Between us and you, there's a great gulf fix, so that they which would not pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, that would come from this. In other words, God, God separated them at death. The, 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 the beggar was, was in a heavenly place. The, uh, the rich man was in hell. Dealing with the flames. Now let's watch and see what happens. Now watch this. It says, Then he said, Now watch this. He, the rich man is talking again. He, first of all, his first request was, Tell why Lazarus? Why? I said, I don't understand that thinking. Why? You wouldn't give Lazarus nothing. You, you, still, you still got this. This attitude that that you just better than even even though Lazarus is in Abraham's bosom, you telling Abraham tell Lazarus. So, some folks never lose that arrogance. They, they they will think that they're better than you. Let me tell you something. When I would pray, when the Lord blessed me to go to college, and I went to college, and I got I got a degree, I thanked God for my mind. Because me getting good grades in college was because God kept my mind as much drugs as I used. You, you don't hear what I'm saying. I would praise him because he kept my mind. Ain't no need of me acting like I'm all got it all together. I'm smarter than anybody. God kept my mind. Now, now, now see, see, and see them old prayers that the modern day church folk they they, they 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 talk about. You know, when grandma grandma be praying, she said, Lord, "Thank you, Lord, for clothing me." In my right mind, <laughs> you know, the modern folk be all looking. She acting. Now, now, grandma knew what she was talking about. Because you can wake up one morning and not know your name. Glory to God. You can get Alzheimer's and, 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 and start losing your memory. And, 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 you, and you deal with it now sometimes. How many people have lost their keys? Let me see here. You lost them when they was in your pocket. Looking for your glasses, you got them on. And you won't thank God for your mind? You, you, you ought to tell somebody, say, if it had not been for the Lord, I wouldn't even be here tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, it don't take much for me to thank him and praise him. Because it's all about him and all about what he's done for me. Let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it. I got, I, got, I got to stop. Glory to your name. So he, tell, he, he got one request out. Now, the arrogant as he can be, he over in hell. 
didn't give Lazarus nothing when he was alive. He going to tell Abraham. See, see, and I'm saying this about, for about the third time. I'm trying to tell you something. Because folk like that don't change too quick. People who's arrogant and honorable like that, they don't change too quick. Mm -hmm. They don't change. They don't change quick at all. Be cautious of that spirit. When you get around that spirit, just get away from it. When you see it, and they'll they be trying to tell you what to do, just just step back from it. Because if you if you do one thing for them, they'll have you run down to the store. I need you to pick up so they can be they they, they can be sitting right there in, in, on, on the job with you. You know, it could be it could be it could be it could be uh, twelve o'clock and and you say, well, I'm gonna go by star. You, you being nice, I'm gonna get you something, whatever you know. Wanna, this yeah, give me that, that, that. You do it one day, and next day, hey, can you go back down to Starbucks? When they ask you this, why don't you go? I went yesterday. <laughs> Folk like that, you got to put them in their place. So they'll know not to come at you. Then he had a second request. He, he said, uh, he said, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Now, now watch this. Now he wanted him to go get, you know, dip his finger in some water, put it on his tongue. He's saying, well, if he's not going to do that, send him to my daddy's house. Why you want to send Lazarus anywhere? I, I, want, I want you to catch this because I, I know that there are several people in here who, who deal with that foolishness. And you do stuff because you're just nice. But when folks start using you, it ain't about being nice. <sighs> it's, it's, not, it's not about being nice. They're taking advantage of you. Because, they, they, first of all, they're removing you from where, where you are and what you're doing to get you to do something for them that you're never going to be compensated for. And you be called, you, you, you do that for a month or two and they'll call you the coffee lady. You got a master's degree, now they call you the coffee lady. All because you being nice. Being a Christian does not mean that you have to let folk take advantage of you. You ain't got to say nothing. Because I know I got folk in here that take advantage of folks, and I got folk in here that's being taken advantage of, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to try to stop that tonight before I get up out of here. Get your, get your own coffee. Amen. Get your own donut. Bless his holy name. Don't be asking me to do nothing because when people get you to get you to be like that, they, they, they become in their own mind superior to you. And nobody is superior in the house of God. There are different functions and different assignments. But there's no superiority. Bless the holy name of God. So he's telling him, he said, he said, send him, send him to my father's house. Then he says in 28, for I have five brethren that, they may that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. By the way, send Lazarus by daddy's house. I got five brothers. Let him preach to them. Lazarus, 
the one you wouldn't give a crumb of bread to. So, 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 watch this. The person that's trying to use you to do this and to do that won't give you nothing. I, I don't want to go there, Lord Jesus. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. It's Valentine's Day. You know, I don't want to do that right now. Because some folk deal with folks. to get you to do stuff. But they never do nothing for you. <laughs> they, 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 they want you to do stuff. They want you to do stuff. And they won't give you nothing. Amen. And, and see, when I talk about Valentine's Day, you know, you, it's a day where people normally get, a, get something. Say, people normally get something, especially if they involved with somebody, they get something. You want, I, let me see, where am I? Be doing stuff for you all year long. And don't think enough of you to do anything for you. It could be a, a, just a good friend or people that you do stuff for. Anytime somebody do something for you, you ought to show some, something back, some, some much obliged or something, some thank you or something. And I don't want to say this to to bring up no kind of crazy feelings. But sometimes, you know, in 2018, it's, it's some stuff got to change. You, you got to position yourself uh, so, so, so that folk just won't disrespect you. you. You see right here, the man died. He didn't tell Abraham, tell him, go to the... Lazarus was the one that was sick with sores. He didn't give him nothing while he was living. After he died, he's in torment. He said, tell Lazarus to stick his finger in some water. Who do he think he is? That didn't work. Go tell my brothers. Testify. Preach to them. Tell them don't, don't come down here. Let's, let's see. Yeah, 29. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Well, watch this. He said, that, that, that's, that's oftentimes when people are, uh, you know, they pass or whatever. We all have opportunity to hear the word. This Wednesday night. You can come out here on Wednesday night. You can hear the word on Wednesday night. Amen. You got to understand that everybody's not going to heaven. I want everybody to go. But it saddens me that some folk ain't going to make it. Now, now, after he tells Abraham, tell his brothers, Abraham said, no, uh, uh, your brothers, they got Moses and the prophets. W watch this, watch this. He said, nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, he, they will repent. In other words, he, he's not going to pay no attention to what Abraham's saying now. No, no, no. You send somebody. Verse 31, this concludes our lesson. He said to him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded the one rose 
from the dead. Stand to your feet with me. One rose from the dead. They would not be persuaded. Amen. Isn't that something? So, when I read that particular parable, what I see in that parable is somebody who never changed. And they wanted to use Lazarus even in death. This is the year you have to stop letting people take advantage of you. When we read these parables, many times, as you can tell, Jesus is teaching a lesson. That rich man had that rich man uh, personality. And uh, when you read it, when you read the story, you get the inference or the understanding that the, that the rich man believed in God. There are people that believe in God, but they don't change. The, the, rich, man, the rich man's personality was etched in his uh, being wealthy. The wealth had him. Amen. That, that, that's why you have to, people have different personalities. And, and, and if they get saved, Salvation affects that personality. If you were one way in the street, uh, if you're not careful, you can bring that same attitude into the may, may not You may not be, when you get saved and get to join the church, you, you may have been, you know, somebody who drank a lot. But then, then when you got in church, you stopped. Now, just because you stopped drinking, doesn't mean that you stop having that drinking attitude or that personality. You, you can use drugs in the street, and if you're not careful, you bring that drug addict personality into the street, into the church. You may not be using drugs, but the personality is the same. You, you, you may, you could have been a hooker in the street. If you ain't careful, you come to church. If you were promiscuous, you bring that same promiscuous personality in the church. You may not even be trying to get with nobody, but folk would think they can get with you. Because of how you act and how you present yourself. How you doing? You doing all right? And, and, and different drugs have different personalities. If you own heroin, like I was, or you dealt with cocaine, or you dealt with crack, you bring that same crack attitude. Can't never get enough in the church. It, it, like I said, if you were a hooker out in the street and and whatever you, and you, you may not be trying to sleep with nobody, but, but when, when you get around men or women, whatever you were doing, you, 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 you present that. You, you know Bishop Charity Marathon. Bishop, you know I love you. But th see, that's that personality. You, you understand what I'm saying? Here tonight. Was that personality? Was that personality? Say that because that personality takes over. 
when you try to let those particular fruit of the spirit come forth, that, 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 that cocaine, that heroin, that alcohol, that whorish personality comes to the forefront. And, and it's hard to win people to Christ. Because if a person is not saved, they pick up on all that because they got the same type spirits. And you can't bring them to Christ because they don't even think you came to Christ. I'll bow your heads with me very quickly. Father, we thank you for this day, for your goodness and for your mercy. Tonight we pray that you would bless us as we try to change. We are presenting a personality that's not of you. And we need you to step back into our spirit. And when we talk, let people hear your voice. When we walk, let people see you walking. When we act, God, let people see your behavior. See that we have changed and not be like the rich man, even though he was in hell. He refused to change. I thank you now. In Jesus' name. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church, I want you to remain right there where you are. The doors of the church are open. Wait, 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 just, wait, just play real softly, real softly. I want you to look toward the pulpit. I want to know tonight that somebody that's here who is uh, not saved, don't have a church home, haven't been baptized. You came by tonight and you just wanted to come to church, you just wanted to come to a, a place that's safe. So sometimes being out in the street is like, uh, you get tired of the street. Your spirit is tired. You, you don't want to do it no more. You, you say to yourself, you know what, I, I, I want to change all the way, Bishop, but I, I'm just coming tonight just to, you know, just to come into a safe place. I get tired of the craziness. But I'm asking you tonight, give your life to him. Let him change you. Let him work on you. Let him do it. Let him do it. And don't be concerned about nobody in this room. Because I guarantee you, everybody in this room got some issues. That's why we're here. Because he, so he can work on our issues. He can work on us. If you don't have a church home, you don't belong to a church, I recommend this ministry here. I think it's the greatest ministry in the world. So wherever you are tonight, you haven't been baptized, you're not saved, you don't have a church home, we want you to come deacons and deaconesses and ministers. Please help me quickly. Thank you so much. Please help me. Come to Jesus. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Give your heart to him. Give your heart to him.
give your heart to him. Give your heart to him. Give your heart to him. Hallelujah. Check, check with your neighbor. Your neighbor, are you saved? You have a church home. Tell them, I will walk with you tonight if you want me to. Bless this. I, I feel like there's somebody in this place. Glory to God. I feel like there's somebody here.
because of what I've been through, what my four parents have been through. Because I, I, I've been through my family, my race of people been through some stuff. We still standing right here. So, so don't let folk doing Black History Month get you all jacked up. And it's just about you. We're Christians. It's about everybody. And don't argue and fuss with nobody about what their belief is because their belief is their view. No, no, if, 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 if I had, if my eyes could take a picture and flash it on the screen, you would see a certain view. If Bishop's eyes could take a picture and flash it on the screen, he'd have another view. It don't mean that his view is right and mine is wrong. It's, it's where we're standing. Are you hearing me? It's where we're standing. And then when we, when we understand who God is, it's where we are. in life if you view God from walking out of a hospital when somebody's passed you have one view the young lady walking down the aisle to get married on the same day got another view but guess what same God same God so don't let people bring you into this foolishness that, that they got running around out here because they finally found out who God was and who they were. And they act like ain't nobody ever, ever heard that before. We have heard that years ago. Bishop Stallings, who used to come to our church, I must be getting to come back. He used to come to our church, walk on the pews all the way back, preaching and hollering. Went downtown and burned every picture of, of a white Jesus back in the 90s. Made, made CNN, made all kind of news across the world. He's pushing the point. He said, how, how can Jesus come from this part of the world and not be black? And he, he's correct. Don't let folk mess with your head. You know Jesus Where you are in life right now and your opinion of what's going on is going to be different because how you see him is not like how anybody else sees him in the whole world and we want you to get put your offering your seed together very quickly and uh, use this $15 seed or whatever you're going to do for the week and, and just come on up here amen I had to share that with you amen pastor